Hello everybody on YouTube, this is Super Nintendo, and I feel like I need to talk about this again, and it is over the overly nitpicky nature of the Child's Play franchise fandom, and I'm gonna shut this so the light isn't so bright. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um... And I have actually come up with a buttload of counterpoints to a lot of the nitpicks in Cult of Chucky. So without further ado, here we go. The first nitpick I see is uh, Chucky in Cult of Chucky has about three or more opportunities to achieve his goal, but doesn't because he just fucks around. Now, the counterpoint to this is that this has been a problem with the Child's Play franchise since the second movie, arguably since the first movie. Uh, it's clearer with the second one. But remember in Child's Play 2 when Chucky has Andy tied to his bed and starts the chant? And he stops because Kyle comes in the room, right? But if he had just... He, he has Andy fucking tied to the bed. All he has to do is kill Kyle and kill the parents. The, the, the fucking foster parents. That's all he has to do. And then continue the chant. He wins. And that's just one example out of the entire fucking franchise. And another, uh, a lot of, I'm sure somebody's going to be like, I bet you can't name another one. Okay, I'll do one from a different movie, because Child's Play 2 has a fuck ton of them, where Chucky just fucks around, even though he knows he's on a time limit. Child's Play 3, one of the fan favorites of the whole franchise. Child's Play 3, he... First off, he thinks that his, um, who he can transfer into has reset when there's no evidence for this. And he shows multiple times massive ignorance over his voodoo abilities, let's say. Ch uh, as soon as he, as soon as he knows that he doesn't have to do anything to Andy and he can just go into Tyler, what the fuck does he do? He goes to Andy to fuck with him and give away that he has a new body. that A new body that he can transfer into a new person. Why? You are fucking sabotaging yourself for no real reason. And it, even funnier is... He, like, if he took, if he had Tyler take him to, like, his barracks or something, he could have swapped bodies with Tyler in the first 20 minutes of the fucking movie. And then, uh, whether, whether you love it or hate it, Seed of Chucky has this same problem as well. They, uh, they don't transfer into the, their human bodies right away because... They want Jennifer Tilly to give birth first. Okay, that's fine. But Chucky can still turn into fucking Red Man before all this shit happens. There's no real reason why. Chucky just is like, you know what? I'm feeling the itch to kill. Let's go kill Britney Spears and some other fucking random guy miles away from Red Man and all this shit. It's like, it's your own damn fault that this happened. Love it or hate it, the entire franchise has this problem, not just Cult of Chucky. Okay, uh, on to the next one. Uh, the Cult of Chucky has lazy writing and tries to lazily explain stuff that doesn't make sense for the rest of the franchise. 
like Chucky being able to uh, possess multiple bodies, for example. Again, I, I made a whole video on this point in particular, but the writing for these movies has never really been that good. Um, and particularly with the voodoo thing that that I made a whole video on, I'll put it in the link, uh, put it in the description. But um, child's the writing for these movies has never been that good, starting with the first fucking movie. Okay, Chucky. In the first movie, throughout the first half of the movie, believes he's invulnerable and inkillable. Why does he pretend to be a normal doll? There's no fucking reason for it. And it doesn't serve his purpose. And if you wanna make if you wanna make the argument of um Oh well, he has to. He has to do that so people don't suspect him. Nobody's gonna fucking suspect a doll. They proved this in the movie and throughout the whole fucking franchise. You know, it, do, it that doesn't make any sense. And on top of that, in Child's Play One, he shows the ability to move around on his own. Why does he need Andy to take him to all these places in the first movie? Doesn't make any fucking sense. You can't say that Cult of Chucky has bad writing like, oh my god, by, by the, ch by the liter literary masterpieces of the Chucky franchise. This is a low. No, it's not. As, I like Seed of Chucky, but even I have to admit, the writing in that movie is the worst out of the whole franchise. But Cult of Chucky at least tries to explain its shit. It may not be a explanation that you like, but you can't act like it's like, oh my God, it's so terrible. It's almost as bad as Cedar Chuck. No, it fucking isn't. Ugh. The inconsistency whether or not the dolls bleed or feel pain. I can't really argue against this one. This has been something that's bugged me since Curse of Chucky, and I came up with a theory around why he doesn't bleed in that movie, but they seem to have shoot that down in Cult of Chucky. And uh, in my review, I said, like, they explained it. I was wrong. They, they did not explain why he doesn't bleed. I can't really argue against that one. That is a flaw with the movie. But to be fair, it's not the only one that has done this, considering that in Seed of Chucky, Chucky gets chopped up like a fucking vegetable by his own son, but his severed arm is still alive and fucking chokes the hell out of Glenn, which might explain why his son isn't an in any of the movies, and maybe his daughter. We, It is possible that Chucky killed them. Um, four. At the beginning of, at the beginning of Cult of Chucky, Andy, all grown up, has Chucky's severed head on a plaque and spends his nights torturing Chucky. One of the established rules of the Child's Play franchise is that the longer Chucky is inside the doll, the more human he becomes. So how is he, how is his severed head able to still function and live? Again, with the seed of Chucky thing, his severed arm was able to move around on its own. And on top of that, in, in, um, at the beginning, uh, at the end of the first movie, his severed head is still able to move around and talk. So maybe it's just a thing of like, you gotta shoot him in the heart or blow up his actually, I, that one I can't argue that much against. I really can't. But ultimately, I think people over-exaggerate 
the problems with Cult of Chucky. I mean, I love the Child's Play franchise. It's my favorite horror franchise to date. But I... But it's not hard to admit that these movies have some pretty full, poor fucking writing. I mean, like, I am such a nerd for this franchise that I went out and bought the complete series DVD box set, and I'm going to buy the Blu-ray at some point. But none of these movies have that good writing. I mean, hell, in the for opening scene of the first movie, Chucky outwits a cop. Like, the, the cop car comes rolling by, he hides from it in plain sight. Yeah. As much as I love this franchise, it's dumb, goofy, bloody fun. You can analyze it to hell and back about, oh, the significance of the Child's Play franchise is the best in horror, in the horror genre. And it's like, no, it isn't. No horror movie makes perfect analytical sense. Even the Saw movies, which try to make themselves really smart, you got a you got a fucking cancer patient that is coughing weak and all this shit. That it's established in the movie franchise that he doesn't have money for chemo. How is he able to afford all of his all the materials for his death traps? So at the end of the day, you can you can say like, oh, it goes against a couple of the rules, but don't act like the child's play franchise is like fucking Shakespeare or anything. Cause it's not. The Child's Play franchise is dumb, goofy, bloody fun. If it if like the rules, like the the bloody the whether or not the dolls bleed or feel pain or whatever, you can you can say like that's a problem with the franchise, but don't act like these movies have the best writing or anything. So I think I have thoroughly pointed out the stupidity of a lot of the child's play fandom. And I hope I have opened up your eyes to the goofy, dumb, bloody mess of fun that these movies are. At the end of the day, it's about, it's a serial killer possessing a children's toy beating the crap out of people to kill them with the voice of Brad Dourif. So, without further ado, I will end the video and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye